<laughs> All right, I think I was able to find a pretty good visualization for what's going on here. The boy is my audience, and the goose is me still making videos about the Xbox 360 so long after it's been discontinued. <laughs> Hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I woke up and thought of this because... That's just how my brain works sometimes. I'll wake up and think of cancelled peripherals or modding related things for systems that I do enjoy. Now, it's no secret if you've been around here for a while that I absolutely love the Xbox 360 in terms of it just being a console and being a huge gateway into getting me back into gaming, modding, and, you know, a few other things. And also, some of the first traction I got from this channel in terms of viewership and gaining subscribers and such was from being in the Xbox 360 modding related scene, uh, whether it was from dropping news of some kind, to showing how to flash DVD drives, to even later on doing more hard mods on the systems. It's just a system that is very near and dear to me for many different reasons, and if you've stuck around since the Xbox 360 days, thank you very much, it's actually very much appreciated. But I want to talk about something related to the Xbox 360, and this is something that I really haven't even seen that much information on because it was cancelled. It is something called the XODE, and in case you do not know, this is a optical drive emulator, or was supposed to be one, for the Xbox 360. Now, to give you all some background on this for anybody who might be new, or maybe you just don't know that much about modding, or maybe you don't know what the hell I'm talking about here, an optical drive emulator is, in short, taking a original game console of some kind, at least that's what we're talking about here, and then adding in some hardware into it, which will then emulate the disk drive on the system itself, so therefore you can play any disk-based games off of some kind of different physical media, whether that be flash storage, whether that be a USB device of some kind. I actually have a few examples here that I could show you all. One great example to use right now would be the Dreamcast. Now, I'm sure people will already know where I'm headed with this. A lot of people have heard of this, and it is the GDMU or GDEMU. In short, if you can see right there inside the Dreamcast, there is no longer a laser assembly. Instead, there is a black printed circuit board, and I will show you all. All the games that I play on this Dreamcast are now on this 256 gigabyte SD card. So that's the idea of it. Again, we took the laser assembly out of here and we simply replaced it with something else that would now allow me to play all my games off a SD card as opposed to off of CDs or GD-ROMs. The second example I want to share with you all is, depending on who you talk to, this will maybe be more invasive or less invasive. Uh, let me just show you and then I'll get into that aspect. Here's my original PlayStation one, not my original original one I had as a kid, but my main one I use now, and right here is the SIO or the PSIO or the PlayStation Input Output. This little device is really cool because it does about the same thing. What you do is you take this right here, which is the SIO device itself. You have to do some internal modifications to the console, so in that way it is a little more invasive because you do have to do some more extensive modifications while it's with the Dreamcast, really all you need is a screwdriver. But here you need to do some soldering. But in the end, you're able to take this, you're able to hook it up to your parallel I.O. port in the back of the system that you modify, and then once you get everything set up, again, it's the same idea, you can just take all your games and run them off of your SD card as opposed to running them off the disk drive itself. But the thing I really like about this mod, check it out you still have the laser assembly there and working. So if I ever need to play a disc, which is important because apparently SIO doesn't have the best compatibility with the complete library, well, guess what? You can always run a disc off of here. So this is why I say it might be more or less invasive, because you're not removing any functionality using the SIO, but you are going to have to do a harder installation. And to clarify even further, just so people could understand what a ODE is not, here is my soft modded PlayStation 2. This has a free MIC boot or free MC boot installed on it. And in the back, I'm using the network adapter to have a, I believe a one terabyte hard drive 
filled with the games that I want to play. Uh, although it is about the same idea there, this would not constitute as a ODE. This is simply using a software modification in order to use homebrew that is on the memory card right here that will allow me to play games off of a hard drive that I have installed on the system. But aside from that, there's really no physical changes or physical modifications that have been done to the system. So an example like this, this is not a ODE. So now that we have all of that out of the way, I want to direct you over to Team Executor's site where they had shown the XODE device. You know, I'm just, I'm never going to get over the Nintendo makeover on this. I'm never going to get over that. Anyways, posted March 4th, 2014. It's been a quiet few months regarding development on anything new, and we've had this under our hats for a while. We always said we'd never do an ODE product, but felt we could make something better than what is currently available. Presenting XODE, the next generation of ODE design. Supports fat and slim with both 2.5 inch and 3.5 inch hard drive footprints. We have also added support for an optional Wi-Fi dongle so you can navigate and load games from a web interface on your computer or smartphone. As you can see, we've taken a completely different approach to this by designing a complete replacement for the DVD drive that has everything you need built in. As you can see, the 2.5 inch designs are all hot swappable. We are interested in as much feedback as possible, including any issues you have with other 360 ODE products that you would like to see addressed with the XODE. And here we get to take a look at the photos. So first of all, taking a look at the XODE FAT setup with a 2.5 inch drive. As you can see, this is really cool. I've always thought this design was awesome. Now I'll show you a 360 drive real quick. This is just a standard Xbox 360 drive that I ripped from a system that died. I don't even remember when. I don't remember how I got this. The point is, this is a Xbox 360 fat drive. The slims are going to be about the same. But as you can see, this is a nice metal chunk right here. And this just goes, you pop it into your 360, you hook it up, and you're all good to go. However, as you can see from the first photo... It looks like they didn't repurpose this. They end up making a whole new setup. They made a whole new casing in short here. So you really don't just like open up one of these and hollow it out. No, this is all new stuff. As you can see, just from a quick glance here, I did finally notice today looking at this a bit further that it does have a fan inside of it as well too to keep the printed circuit board and hard drive there all nice and cool as need be. But as you can see, this has, you know, all that custom work on it. It has the custom made printed circuit board and I really like the hot swappable design. This is another photo demonstrating how a 2.5 inch drive would have been hot swappable. So let's say you had a 500 gigabyte drive with some games, you want to put another one in there on the fly, you just take out the drive, you put in another one. And this was really cool to me as well too. I liked just how flush it worked with the Xbox 360 itself. I also really like that USB port right there. Nothing further was really divulged on that. That, unfortunately, so we can only speculate what this was going to do. I can only assume this would have been a method to update the ODE itself without ripping apart the whole system and maybe even loading up your games that are ISOs from a flash drive or an external USB drive of some kind. The only thing I find funny here is that as you can see at this point in 2014, the fat Xbox 360 was so old that look at like the white right here, it is so bright compared to the actual console itself. So even though it's trying to stay flush, it's going to stick out a little bit, at least in terms of color. Next up here, the same fat system but with a 3.5 inch drive and of course using this method that you do lose the ability to hot swap, but look, you can put a giant regular hard drive in there and get about the same thing. Again, this also looks really nice as well too. I like how all this is thrown in, and to be honest, I actually like how the outside of the bezel here, I like how the bezel here looks more than the 2.5 inch. Although I like the 2.5 inches functionality more. And of course we have to talk about the slim where the slim ended up getting the same love as well too. So really about the same form factor and everything customized for the Xbox 360 slim. 
It is in black from what I see. I don't think there was any other colors that were really detailed outside of these original prototype shots. And it looks like the PCB might be a little bit different on here. I haven't done a full one-to-one -one comparison by any means, but as you can see, it's about the same concept here with the 2.5 inch drive, still hot swappable, and the black does look a lot nicer in terms of having everything match on it. Uh, I can only assume here that they would have done matte and glossy, uh, but maybe they would have just done glossy. I'm not sure, and it would have just stuck out on a matte system. And this is how it looks when it's all closed up and you're not touching it. This looks great, so the slim one looks better in my opinion. And of course, we see the exact same thing with a full 3.5 inch hard drive, all of these shots here. I like how everything is just real flush and such right there, so all you can tell there was a lot of effort that got put into this. There's still plenty of room to work around and breathe in here, but also every Everything just seems to fit just fine to me from what I'm observing. And this, again, the 3.5 inch still looks better in my opinion, but I would rather have the 2.5 inch for that added flexibility of, uh, I, I just like the functionality of it more. Now the XODE has always been an interesting piece of hardware to me, simply because even when I saw it back in 2014, I thought it was cool, but my first thought was, why so late? In my opinion, this should have been not even announced, but this should have been released three or even four years prior, because I believe it was three years prior where the X key, for example, had come out. There were a few setups that were coming out, and I'll get into those as well too, but that's when ODEs were coming out, and that was really, you know, in the midst of everything for the Xbox 360, and really, in my opinion, the best time for some of those to come out, I would say 2010, 2011. But at 2014, this is already announced a few months after the Xbox One was released. And then assuming this would come out, let's say, I don't know, a year after the Xbox One was released, I just don't know why it came out so late. And mind you, if you need some more history on that, Team Executor was never on board for the ODEs. In fact, they seemed to be quite against it, which was another reason why this was surprising. How they even said in their original post, we always said we'd never do an ODE product. And that is true, because I know for years they were always proponents of either doing JTAG modifications or reset glitch hack modifications, hard mods to allow you to run unsigned code on your system, or you flash the disk drive itself with a custom firmware from Commodore Forever, you flash it with a custom firmware, and then from there, you burn off all of your games, and assuming they're properly patched, you're all good to go. But I clearly remember there just seemed to be a competition, mainly between Team Executor with their drive custom firmware and such, and all of their accessories for DVD drives, and mainly with X-Key. And X-Key, I can even show you that, because I have one of them right here. Big shout out to Mr. Pete1985 to donating this as well. He ended up sending this over a while ago because he just said, I don't need it anymore. And these things are like impossible to find, you know, legitimate and brand new now. I do plan to put this to good use here soon, buddy, but very much thank you for it. As you can see, this is, well, you can't really get the best look at it, but this is the X key device itself. And essentially what you do is you use this as a pass through between your Xbox 360's DVD drive and the motherboard. And from here, this little board is going to emulate your disk drive. So therefore, you can still use the original disk drive for all of your disk-based games, or you wire everything up, you essentially have this little device sticking out of your Xbox 360 around the back, and then from there, you just end up taking any USB drive that has a ISO on it, you put it in, this is hooked up to your 360 and hooked up all through this. I'm grossly oversimplifying this, bear with me. But mind you, once you have that all set up, you are then able to use this device to play any games you have off of this device. But the thing is, I clearly remember rumors of people saying, mainly from the Team Executor camp, saying that you can get banned for using the X key. And even C Forever in the modding community famously said, the X key is an expensive way to get banned. I don't know if those are the exact words that were used, but once that was put out, it seemed like everyone took that and ran with it. So you had all the people who enjoyed their X keys who were fighting for that and saying, hey, this device is great. I don't have to worry about constantly patching my disk drive. I don't have to worry about all of my games and such on disks all over the place. And then you had all the Team Executor fanboys who were saying, nope, the X key is an expensive way to get banned. Now, years later, 
later, and this might be a little bit anecdotal, but look, I've talked with countless people about this. I've seen many, many people who've had these devices from day one as well, too. And so many people that were heavy proponents of both of these devices, either flashing their disk drive or using an ODE, really, it seemed to be negligible. Maybe, maybe some bans might have happened with the X key when they were still kind of figuring out some challenge tables and such, but even then, I know people who they got on the X key train immediately and assuming you did everything right and by that I mean making sure your firmware was up to date when it wasn't safe to go online making sure your system was offline not take it online that happened with both flashed users and ODE users of some kind and as long as you did not play any main first party games online early you seemed to be okay. So in my opinion there, that really just looked like it was a rumor that was put out by a few people that spread to the masses like wildfire, so people would not buy an X key, they would continue to flash their disk drives and buy all the hardware that was needed for that. Now the XODE was announced in March 2014, we really didn't hear much from it, and then at one point the CR4 XL chip came out. That was the last glitch chip that Team Executor ended up making for the Xbox 360 and the last Xbox 360 product that was released by them. It's a great chip, but people were also asking, what happened to the XODE? And here we can talk about that as well too. If you go to the very last page, it was revealed on September 25th, 2014, that Executor had quoted a previous post, which I can't get to unfortunately since the redesign, but it says here from Executor, I dumped the project. A shame, because it was really awesome, but too expensive to manufacture what we came up with. If it was three years ago, sure. But the market just isn't there anymore. Sad, really, as we put eight months into that. Some you win, some you lose. And the final, final post on this thread before it was closed out was made by UberGeek on September 29th, 2014, saying, The end of the XODE was only decided last week. It really isn't smart to post bullshit stories. There's absolutely nothing wrong with communication, as there was no new new to report. So the only problem was your impatience. We simply found that the demand was no longer there for something that would have probably cost upwards of $120 plus. 5,000 pieces minimum have to be built, and we were not prepared to invest half a million dollars on something that was a big risk. Some you win, some you lose. And unfortunately, that was about the end of the XODE, a pretty short story. It was announced in March of 2014, and by September 2014, it was officially declared dead, simply because it was really something that was going to be cool, but it would have cost too much and was just too late into the system's life cycle. And even as Team Executor right there said, and as I said from the beginning, if it was three years prior, 2011, this would have been perfect. But unfortunately, I really feel like doing, you know, the flashed versus ODE thing worked against it here because we could have had a cool product like this. And I actually even have reason to believe as well too that this was all done. You see, this is going to be more anecdotal and I apologize that I don't have any physical or tangible evidence of this. So I really just have to go from memory on here and it is quick but I can also explain it as well too. This was several years ago, about five years ago, and one of my friends through YouTube here, Johnny Guns, when he was doing uh, Xbox 360 related modding tutorials and videos and streams and such, he ended up doing a stream where he installed the CR4 XL chip on a Slim. Now, I myself was a moderator in there. I was sick that day and he ended up, you know, kind of just giving me mod status and I said, I have nothing else better to do, so I I'm going to hang out here and it was funny because it was I think like one of the first big videos if not the biggest video on the CR4 XL at the time and of course it was a stream so at that point you had all of your stream based comments on there and the stream comments you get are different than YouTube comments as many people who would navigate the site would know so unfortunately I really can't dig those up because I don't think YouTube was archiving those at that point in time they didn't do the whole stream replay but even now the stream is down, so it's not publicly available. But either way, there were several different Team Executor moderators who were in there. I do clearly remember Blakey being in there, UberGeek might have been in there as well too, and there were maybe two or three others. And at one point, they all kind of started deviating the conversation over to talking about the XODE. And the reason I have to believe with this is because one of them had said, for quote, C Forever wrote a kick-ass firmware. So we know that C Forever was working on this, and that 
that there was firmware that was written for it. And now the rest I'd be paraphrasing here, and it's not all that much, but uh, apparently everything was really good to go on this. The firmware was written. It was just too much money, too much of a risk, too late into the Xbox 360's life cycle. But because of that small snippet in time that I was there for, I do know that this thing is done. Now you might be asking, why am I making a video about this? Why do I care so much about this? Well, I can certainly say it's kind of, you know, a nice memory that I have in regards to the modding scene. I'm really not super invested into it at all. I just think it's a really interesting piece of hardware, and I think it would be cool to see something like this even modern day on the Xbox 360. Yes, I I am aware that you can still flash your disk drive, but that will still involve burning your disks and such. You can still find, you know, X keys here and there. I think the ones you find now, brand new, if you don't find them secondhand, are going to be Chinese bootlegs, which I have one of those as well, too. I still need to mess around with that and kind of do a little bit of a comparison. But either way, there has also been other devices that have come out. One of them was from my good friend Modbot, otherwise known as the Dope Sonar 930, and this is the X360 Dock. I know little to nothing about this device, and I feel like most people are like this as well too, so you know what, maybe I need to reach out to Modbot and see what the hell happened to this thing. The second device which I thought was quite cool in terms of form factor is the Wasabi 360. Now this is another one of those devices, I'd seen some people have it, but it really never caught on as much as the X key. The cool thing about this is, as you can see on the Xbox 360 Slim, there is that top little piece on the top of the console itself. That is actually the Wasabi 360. Now, it's extremely obvious that this is copying the form factor and look of a Xbox 360S development kit, because when they have a sidecar, it looks quite similar to that on top, but this is just using the Wasabi 360. So the form factor, I think, is the best, on my opinion. It does look really cool, but it only works for the Xbox 360S, and from what I heard from some people, it didn't work quite well. And that's why out of the three devices that were out, the X360 dock, the Wasabi 360, and the X-Key, the X-Key seems to be the winner here. It seems to have the most support, it seemed to have the most people using it, and from what I understand, it seemed to just work the best out of all of them. Now, why would you want a ODE so far into the Xbox 360's life cycle now, when you have things like the Reset Glitch Hack, for example? Well, the Reset Glitch Hack and JTAG systems are fantastic, but to this day, you still cannot just play a ISO off the system. You have to take the ISO of your game, dump it to another file system, either in raw files or convert it to another container, and from there, you then play it off the system. System. On top of that, if you take that ISO and burn it to a disk, you still have to flash the DVD drive. Unfortunately, you're not going to be getting out of that, so you can do one of the mods or you can do both of the mods. Now, flashing is almost prohibitively expensive, I would say, which I would... I'm pretty surprised with at this point now, but it does make sense at the same time. It does require some special hardware at times, which that hardware is just not readily available anymore. So it's cheaper and more economical to reset glitch hack or JTAG your system if you have that available. Do a hard mod is what I'm saying. But then let's say if you have a large collection of Xbox 360 games, you want them to be as accurately backed up as possible. You're going to make ISO versions of them. You're then going to make sure they're patched properly so that they can play just fine, and then that's going to require a bunch of burning and such, which you certainly can do if you have a flashed drive, but it'd be really convenient to have all of those on, well, a flash drive right here or a hard drive of some kind and just play them on your Xbox 360 with little to no issues. Again, you can do that with a hard modded system, but it does require many different steps to extract the game, get it over, and all that fun stuff. Plus, if you ever want to play them online, yes, there is still a risk of getting banned. There's always a risk when you take a modified system online, but point is there, if you want to do that on a reset glitch hack system or a modded system, hard modded system of some kind, you do have to pay for a stealth service to get online, and even then it's kind of just a matter of when you're going to be getting banned. While as for a system with a flash disk drive, the firmwares are so rock solid that no one has been banned for firmware alone, for modified firmware alone, since Light Touch came out. And that had to be years and years ago. That was... when did that come out? That was like 2010, 2011 for sure 
when light touch was available. So at this point, I'd argue if you're just wanting to play offline, maybe do some online stuff if you're willing to pay for it and willing to get your system banned and all that fun stuff, but you just want to have everything conveniently available and you don't care about, you know, accuracy all that much, getting a hard modded system would work out for you. However, if you're wanting a convenient solution that's like that, but you can still get online with little to no issues, and you want to have the most accuracy in regards to your game dumps, well then I would say that an ODE solution is going to be the best solution. And again, coming back to this here, you have stuff like the X360 dock, the Wasabi 360, which you can't find at all. You have stuff like this, which is difficult to find, but I guess you can find it. But I just hate seeing a device like this that seems to be all good, seemed to be ready to go, was completed, and it's just been shelved, unfortunately. But economically, I can also understand why it was shelved. Oh, and in case you don't know as well, because I don't think I've detailed it, I have mentioned C Forever, Commodore Forever. That is the person who ended up creating most, if not all, of the DVD drive firmwares, the custom firmwares that people who flashed their drives were using. So the fact that he was the person Person, of all people who is making the firmware for this device, that is something. I mean, if I could choose between any of those devices, I would say XODE simply because of that. Now, some people might be saying, dude, this system is so old at this point. Why do you care about this? Why do you want to get a ODE setup? Nobody is going to buy it. Well, you don't really know that, and I don't really know that either. I can just look at the history that I've shown here. And I already showed it. the PlayStation 1. It has the Sio That seems to be selling well enough. And that is a system that is how old at this point? It's generations older than the Xbox 360. You have, again, returning to form here, the Dreamcast with the GDMU, which I would say out of all the optical drive emulators, this one is probably the most popular I've seen in retro gaming circles and such. And look, these devices are really popular with people who enjoy modding, but they enjoy wanting to play their games on original hardware, but at the same time, they also want to preserve their collection and their original hardware where they can. Yes, this is not 100% accurate because you're not putting a disc in here, but what most people will do is they'll have two Dreamcasts in a scenario like this. One that is completely stock in good condition that will play their disc-based games when they want, and the other one which they will mainly use for times like this. Plus you get some really nice benefits too. The system is going to run cooler and the loading times, oh my goodness, are so much faster. But you also have systems like the GameCube, where the GameCube, for example, you can take all your ISOs for the GameCube and you can play them on a Wii, you can play them on an emulator, of course, you can play them on the V Wii emulator on the Wii U, but guess what? I don't have one in here. I don't have one installed. This one does have a mod chip, but as you can see, the laser assembly is there. But there is even a ODE that is being created for the GameCube, and people are excited about it, and people are going to buy it. Again, the retro community loves this stuff. Do I really have to bring this up? You know what? I'm going to bring it up. But the Sega Saturn as well, too. Yes, there is a ODE for this that exists, but people are extremely excited for Dr. Abrasive's solution, which is going to be using the cartridge slot in the back of the system, which was originally used for video CD playback and such. And as you can see, that's actually what it looks like there. About the same idea, you have your cartridge slot with that device in there, and you load up your games through USB through it. Finally, if we need more examples, the 3DO of all systems. Systems, guys, the 3DO has an ODE setup. Come on now. I, I fully support this, but I'm just saying if a system like the 3DO can have a successful ODE, we can have it on other newer systems as well too, okay? So I guess I'm kind of twofold on this. One of them is the side of preservation, which is why I would support it here, just having, you know, that accuracy with your game backups and such without having to go all in with a hard modded system. And the other thing as well too is just making use of some really awesome hardware and software like this, which has already been done and has been prototyped but was just shelved because it came out too late. If this comes out now, I'm not saying it's going to sell gangbusters because it's certainly not going to, but I had an idea for this as well too, and it's really some stuff that I've seen from the original Xbox community. Ryze119 is a fantastic individual who has released devices such as this, where this is a custom Arduino-based solution called the OGX360, where it allows you to take many different kinds of wired and wireless controllers and run them on a original Xbox. At its core base, 
It's to let you play Xbox 360 controllers while use them on a original Xbox, but you can do it with some other controllers as well too. But this, you can buy it prefabricated like I did, or it's all available open source and you can flash everything and build it yourself. The exact same thing just happened with the same individual Ryze119 releasing something called Open Xenium, in which he took the original Xenium mod chip, ended up reverse engineering it, and guess what? Just released it to the masses for free. This is available right now. This is open source and you can go out and buy all the parts and download all the software and build it and flash it yourself. And no doubt there's going to be other people who are going to do the hardware and software process for you so you can just buy the chip and then install it yourself. But mind you, this is something that was originally closed source. It was then reverse engineered improved upon, I would say, for 2019-2020 standards, and then released open source. And I love seeing stuff like this. Now, one last example I can share with you all is Cobra for the PS3. This is that thing that is thrown into a lot of PS3 custom firmwares. If you've ever loaded a ISO on a jailbroken PS3, yeah, that's Cobra. Thank them. But anyways, the team who originally managed it was using it for a device of some kind. It was essentially locked to hardware. Well, what happened is they open sourced it. And why did they open source it? Well, a user by the name of STL Cards WS simply asked them to. And they released it open source. One person did that. Even right here, I pulled up one of the old threads, actually the one here from October 4th, 2013, where it says here, a few days ago, STL Cards WS sent us a request asking if we could release the source code of the Cobra USB dongle. Today, we are fulfilling this request with a release of the full source code. We are releasing the entire source code under the GPL license. So this kind of got me to thinking here. Why don't I just ask, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? I'm not going to get a reply. They're going to say no. We're going to be in the exact same situation that we're in now. What's the worst that can happen if I do that? So I decided to ask Team Executor themselves. And surprisingly, I got a response back. So in my original email, I was just very cordial with them and said that I know they have a canceled project from five years ago called the XODE. I believe that this could be beneficial to the community now because although it's not going to be selling gangbusters, there is still consistent new interest coming into the Xbox and Xbox 360 related scenes thanks to people such as retro gamers and people who are just wanting to relive a few things and, you know, kind of finally mess with these for the first time. So I simply asked, hey, would there be a chance of seeing a release of this or maybe even open sourcing the physical materials for the community and their response back was hello i will ask if they still have all the code to open source production is not possible we can't make just 100 units or it would cost a fortune we would have to make 10,000 or so which wouldn't sell now. And I do agree with that. I understand 100 units of something so specialized is going to be way too much and I did find it interesting, though, that in the original post, the one that I mentioned, you know, the closed one, they were saying 5,000 pieces. It looks like that's jumped up to 10,000 five years later. And it's going to be really hard to push 10,000 units of anything Xbox 360 related here at this point in time. But the point is that dialogue was opened. That question was asked. And while it's not a yes or a no, it's definitely a maybe. If they still have it, maybe. Will they release it if they still have it? Maybe. And this is where I feel like if you've made it until the end, I'd like to ask for a call to action of you all. And look, I don't do this, okay? You all should know at this point, if you've watched me for a while, I rarely, if ever, offer a call to action. But if you are interested in this, if you're interested in modding or hell, even if you just made it to the very end of this video, I'm going to ask you if you could please reach out to Team Executor as well too and ask about the status of this project. I'll even show you all how to do it. Now the website is team-executor.com. The link is going to be down below in the description. All you need to do is go to contact us. From here, you need to select a reason. I selected other reasons to contact them. Give a name, a email address. I'd recommend putting XODE or something along those lines in the subject. And then from there, just politely ask about the status of this project and maybe ask about a release, perhaps a open source release of this. 
I will say though, please be cordial about it. Don't be raging at them or anything or using profanity. Just be polite, be cordial. And all we're doing, we're just asking a inquiry. Hey, I'm contacting you all about the XODE project. It looks like it was shelved about five years ago, but before it was canceled, it looks like it was completed. Would there be any way for this to release or perhaps have a open source release of the hardware and software? as it looks like this would be put to good use and there would be people who would be interested in it in the Xbox 360 modding community or the retro gaming community, whatever you want to call it with, but it would be beneficial. So something like that, you know, put it in your own words, but just be cordial, be polite about it, and the worst thing they're going to do is not respond. I'm also not asking people to spam them either, just please one inquiry per person. Oh, and finally, this is also an important thing as well too. For any of my viewers who might be across the pond who are wondering why they can't access this site, well, Nintendo ended up getting the Team Executor sites blocked in Europe, so you're going to have to use another method of accessing these sites, perhaps with a VPN or a proxy, but that's all going to be up to you if you choose to do this. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. Thank you all for listening. This went on a lot longer than I expected, but I just wanted to talk about this because that's what I do. I guess. That's what I do. I find stuff like this, or I remember some weird stuff like this, and I want to check it out. So, anyways, let's see what we can do. If something comes from this, awesome. If nothing comes from this, you know what? I hope you all enjoyed the video. And if you enjoyed the video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario, signing off for real this time. Later, everyone.